Uh, this government sees climate change uh, and the reaction to the Stern Review as just another piece of political management to be bluffed through until everyone loses interest. We've seen, in my view, an amazing display of complacency from uh, the, the government, the Prime Minister and his followers. It's been striking, however, we haven't heard much this week from the Minister for the Environment, uh, Senator Campbell. I suspect this is because the Minister has actually been persuaded by the experts in his department and by the CSIRO, as well as by the Stern Review, of the seriousness of the climate change issue. But like his predecessor, Senator Hill is outnumbered uh, uh, by uh, the climate sceptics in the Cabinet led in public by the Minister for Industry. Although I think, uh, uh, from my observation, the Prime Minister is still a, at heart a climate sceptic too. Uh, what the Honourable Member for Graindler, uh, the Shadow Minister for Environment, has done these last uh, days is, uh, in his passionate best, cut through the complacency of the government front bench on the climate change issue. For his pains, he's been ridiculed and suspended from, from the House. Time, however, will prove that he's right. As the Stern Review documents, climate change is happening right now. It's affecting our environment, our economy, our society now, today. The situation will only get worse. At the moment, it's possible to argue incorrectly, but at least plausibly, that, we, we are, that what we are seeing in Australia at present has no connection with climate change, that it's a normal fluctuation of the climatic cycle. I'm not surprised at the cynicism of uh, the Prime Minister who is mainly interested in the electoral cycle and trying to mount superficial scare campaigns over this issue, but I'm, I'm really astonished at the complacency of backbench members of the government over this issue, particularly those representing rural, regional and coastal seats. Do they think their constituents are enjoying the reality of climate change as it's being experienced in regional Australia at present? Do they think that, that it'll have no consequences if it's allowed to go on? Government members have been lecturing us all week about how they won't sign up to Kyoto because they want to protect jobs in Australia. Let me ask the honourable members for Leichhardt, Herbert and Dawson how the constituents will fare if the Great Barrier Reef is bleached to death by a rise in water temperatures in the Coral Sea. Do they think tourists will come from all over the world to look at dead coral? One, um, have these members read the Stern Review? It specifically names the Great Barrier Reef as one of the world's most vulnerable ecosystems. Page 57, part 3 of the review points out that a mere one degree rise in temperatures will cause an 80% bleaching of the world's coral reefs, including the Great Barrier Reef. I recommend it to those honourable members. I represent an, uh, an urban seat, not one dependent on primary industries or tourism, but climate change is affecting urban Australia too, uh, if not quite as immediately as uh, regional Australia. Melbourne's water supply is at the mercy of regular rainfall in regional Victoria. Our climate is going to move uh, to a hotter and drier phase as a result of climate change. There's obviously going to be less water in our dams. Um, <coughs> this not only affects um, gardens in every house in, uh, in Melbourne, but every aspect of our lives, as well as the ecosystems of the Arrow Valley and Port Phillip. The Liberal and National parties in Victoria say the solution is to build more dams, but uh, dams won't help if there's not enough rain to fill them. The real solution is to stop climate change before Melbourne's water supply crisis problems become a crisis. The only way to stop climate change is to radically reduce carbon emissions in accordance with the Kyoto Protocol. In the meantime, Melbourne needs to reduce its water consumption and the Victorian Government, led by Steve Brax, is doing an excellent job in this regard uh, with uh, the program Our Water, uh, Our Future. Since 2003, uh, John Thwaites, Minister for Water, has issued nearly 130,000 rebates to people purchasing water-saving pro products such as dual flush toilets, rainwater tanks and grey water systems. Uh, speaker, we could do, do with some dual flush uh, toilets in this uh, parliament. This and other measures of the Victorian Government are already saving more than a billion litres of water a year. I commend uh, John Thwaites, who represents the same part of Melbourne that I do, on his leadership in this area. It's a pity we don't see any leadership on the climate change uh, issue from uh, this federal government. The Prime Minister likes to praise Tony Blair for his courage and leadership, leadership and I certainly agree with him about that. Hasn't the Prime Minister, however, noticed that Tony Blair and Gordon Brown have immediately embraced the Stern Review and have committed themselves to the most radical program of emission reduction in the Western world? I'm pleased to speak to see experimental models of geo-sequestration being set up in Warrnambool, but it's an only, only an experiment. Commercial development of this or other technologies won't be widely used un until <coughs> thus affecting greenhouse emissions unless it's economically viable. That's why we need carbon trading. The Australian people won't be fooled by short-term uh, PR announcements about the environment by this government. People know climate change is happening.